let's talk about Starkware, which has decided to open source its Starkware prover. This is a pretty big deal. Why? Because Starkware is valued about $8 billion as of last, last valuation, and they're deciding to open up their core technology to everyone. This was just announced at their newest conference in Tel Aviv, Israel, over the weekend. This is a pretty big deal because a lot of people have been using Starkware or they've been getting very hyped to use Starkware, which is an Ethereum scaling technology. Uh, it uses something called zero knowledge proofs in order to decrease gas fees and increase throughput on the Ethereum main chain. A lot of people have been hyped for Starkware. There's a lot of different solutions out there, but I think Starkware has been one of the most important scaling tools coming out that a lot of Ethereum developers and researchers have been waiting on to go live. And now the fact that they've basically open sources shows that they have continued interest in following the crypto ethos, which is really founded upon open source software. Zach, I want to throw this one over to you. I think this is a great crypto community, crypto culture story, an $8 billion valuation, and then you turn around and open source your software. Yeah, that's super cool. Rah, rah on that. I think also it just reflects that there's a bumper crop of all these roll-ups that are actually doing stuff in Ethereum land, right? You have various sort of solutions on the marketplace for all these transactions to occur at this roll-up level and then get settled down to the Ethereum base layer. And I think it's really interesting to see that this one is emerging as potentially one of the bigger ones, right? Starkware with Starknet is certainly in that conversation. You have Optimism, you have Arbitrum, you have all these other things that are out here trying to make Ethereum more functional, more speedy, um, and letting kind of the Ethereum layer one sort of be that settlement layer that may be ultimately more efficient. So I think ultimately to me, like this suggests that Starkware wants to see itself in that conversation for the long haul. Um, but you see more and more activity around these rollups. And I think there's a lot of different competing visions for how they should best be secured, how they should best operate, and ultimately how they should all be uh, connected, you know, going back to the bridge conversation, how um, sort of this, this sort of like hyper multi-chain reality that we find ourselves potentially entering in, how those are uh, talking to each other in a way that makes it usable across these different networks. So that to me is sort of the context, but definitely going to kick it to, to Wendy for her thoughts on um, this particular decision. I actually think it's pretty cool. And that just goes to show you how important competition is in the crypto space and in every industry. If we didn't have all of these competing layer two solutions or products that are offering, you know, similar, similar services, I don't think that they would have offered this or they would have made it open source. I think they would have kind of continued to gatekeep it. And I feel like if they didn't, or if they didn't make it open source, then other people would just create something that was similar that could potentially be better. So this is a good way for them to keep their foot on the pedal and also kind of follow that Bitcoin ethos because Bitcoin is open source too. So I like it. I'm for it. Yeah, I'll sign it back from there. I think just following up on what Zach was talking about with the ZK rollup implementations, we have the Optimism stuff. And actually the other day we saw that Optimism just flipped Solana in terms of transactions. And that was an interesting sort of uh, moment because you start looking at these layer ones and you start looking at these layer twos and you start asking like which one's going to become more important. And on that metric itself, I would say it's like normally overhyped when you look at transactions, total volume locked, all those sort of things. Like I think you need more nuance in the debate because oftentimes these new L2s are bootstrapped using Ponzi games. I mean, that's just like a known fact. You're trying to get traction on top of your new L2. So they'll launch some sort of protocol uh, with incentives to get people on this, uh, onto the L2. And so, but, but at the same time, we really need to like look at the, the debate here, which is like, is there going to be a multi thesis, multi-chain thesis, Ethereum versus all these other L1s, or is everything going to be built on top of Ethereum with layer twos? I think Starkware, open sourcing its protocol, allowing more competition, bringing more L2s into the game, shows you that there is like a lot of momentum behind that L2 thesis as compared to a lot of L1s that are starting to wither at the vine. Christy, I'll throw it over to you though for last take. Yeah, first off, uh, I clearly got ahead of myself. <laughs> I was so excited about this story I started talking about during the last story. Open sourcing, Starkware, not wormhole. Um, at any rate, uh, but my, my, my point still stands about open sourcing and how there is that security uh, trade-off in that sometimes you will have the, of course you want developers to be able to look at your code and you want everybody to see what's going on with it and offer suggestions, but there is that security trade-off in that it, it makes everything more visible and um, attack vectors in that way also more visible um, and that this is something that any uh, software or hardware company battles with um, so it's a big decision to make and it's one that you know they're not going to take lightly and they're going to take time to implement to make sure that everything is secure when they put it out 